So growing up, I was very interested in a couple of growth cur curves. One was computers, and the other was astronautics. And uh, those growth curves are uh, as different as night and day. And so I've had plenty of opportunity to uh, uh, contemplate technological optimism and what can go wrong with technological optimism. Um, I think actually there are a, a, an awful lot of similarities between um, the a astronautical failures of the post-Apollo era and the, the, the IT, or excuse me, the medical, uh, the, uh, the pro progress in uh, medicine. And I think that we've talked about a, 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 a lot of, the, of what it is in, 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 in medicine today and identified things. Medicine, as compared to, the, to uh, astronautics, uh, has one, at least one additional thing going against it. Um, progress in med medicine has one additional thing going against it. A and that is that um, given uh, the moral stance and, the, and our personal feel feelings about survival, uh, I, I think it's true that uh, the uh, uh, medical policy and regulation has much the same problems with society as obsessive compulsive disorder has for the individual. And if one looks, looks at our situations from that point of view, there's a, there's a lot of things where that, where that effect, I think, makes the, makes the uh, government regulatory uh, situation uh, self-reinforcing and, and very hard to deal with. The, the exponential progress in hardware, uh, in IT hardware, is by comparison to these other two cases, uh, a wonder to behold um, uh, there are so many things about the IT hardware situation that are, that are just um, uh, a, a perfect storm of goodness, that is, uh, effectiveness. Uh, for instance, um, there is universal and unending demand, as far as we can tell, for improvements in IT hardware. Uh, by universal, I mean, unlike making a better mousetrap, um, any, every, everything that humans do, almost, and, 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 and there are surprisingly few counterexamples, are, are, are things where having better automation is a big economic win. So there's that on the one hand. And, the other, and, and another major thing is that um, uh, there, is, there is no initial peak effect. In other words, uh, uh, you get payoff for investment. It is not something you have to wait 50 years to have happen and, and build an enormous infrastructure of stuff to make it happen. Um, it also had the w w uh, wondrous thing that in the early years it was not recognized uh, for the important thing that it was. In the early 70s, I remember that some of my colleagues uh, of a more libertarian persuasion than most at, at San Diego State, we used to joke that the reason we were doing so well is that uh, w without the government regulation, if there had been government regulation, there would have been a rule that no PC could be sold without a card reader. And you can imagine what rules like that would have done uh, to uh, the, uh, the, the development of, uh, of, of, of IT uh, uh, hardware. Um, and we also have the great advantage that uh, failure is an option. You can fail and fail and fail and fail, and, and you get hurt if you fail. I don't mean to say that doesn't happen, but there's no one around to bail you out if you fail. And it's just amazing how many entrepreneurial suckers there are for that deal. <laughs> Guys who are willing to go out and bet the farm, not your farm, their farm, in order to try to make things work. And it, in fact, there should be a pantheon to those failures, uh, up to very spectacular ones like Iridium. Uh, which really aren't, wasn't a failure at all, except for the people who did it. Um, there's another thing that is not in this, it is only somewhat related to being an ex, a, a explanation for why this trend in a, a IT hardware improvement has been so robust, but it also is the most remarkable thing a, a, about the whole trajectory, and that is that one of the units of demand for these products are the people who are improving the hardware and the software. So there really is a bootstrapping effect here uh, of human inventing, inventiveness being uh, improved and improved in, in radically different ways. 
you're, you're going to talk about uh, the progress in, in, uh, in, in DNA sequencing. Is that, is that on the... Sure. Um, <laughs> um, uh, if any, any time you can make something a thousand or a million times better than it w w was before, you find some really surprising things that you can do with it. Things that are just jokes uh, bef before th that happened. And that is the case with the IT uh, uh, hardware. So, for instance, the general thing of, of engaging humanity as a whole via the internet to get solutions is something that just pops up when we get the IT hardware to be better than a certain level. At, over the last five years, uh, and, and going back, say, to, to Wikipedia and Google, uh, this has produced um, a situation where uh, people plus the internet, I think, is an intellectual uh, it's an intellectual power that trumps all, uh, all existing intellectual institutions. And uh, more and more, unless it can somehow be shut down by somebody's army, um, it, it's, it's something that uh, I think is going to make all the other problems that get talked about um, uh, shift, their, shift their focus. There really is the potential for making big improvements uh, uh, through design and collaboration and involving uh, uh, the, the, these uh, group minds. Um, this means, I think, that in, in, in the long run, many of the problems that we're talking about with the medical are, are actually uh, things that are, are going to have some solution uh, stemming from this, this first trend in, in, in hardware um, uh, in, in improvements. Uh, in fact, I think the, the, the most important doable goal that uh, such as we uh, uh, can aspire to is to find a niche that uh, uh, does, not, does not prevent the waste that uh, the people have been talking about and all the terrible things that, uh, bureaucratic things that, that are happening, does not prevent those, but some sort of niche that we are allowed to continue to play in. Um, so, uh, for, for instance, the, the idea that I was talking about at the, at the beginning of the day about being able to run a rating service. Uh, I think various of the ideas that have been brought up today, the, the, the best ones are ones that are that they're completely <coughs> off the government's present radar scope. And if you can find a way to keep them off the government's radar scope, that is, that they don't get embraced and absorbed, that's one very bad thing that, that, that isn't a parent success, but dooms you. And, uh, and at the same time, are not forbidden. If you can find some space between those, then I, I think that the technology is going to give you and the rest of humanity the ability uh, to do great things. In other words, don't stand in the way of, of the money flow that's going to these, uh, these, these entities that aren't doing their job. If you can find a way to stand outside of that, and not get their attention, or not get their, and not get their absorption of you, then I, I think there's uh, great things that, uh, that, uh, that, that can be done. End of comments. Well, that's, that's great. I have a couple of questions there. Um, your, your last part about uh, government, uh, that, that's basically the lesson that I learned with the, the Underground Railroad. We developed the VISTA system in the field, basically in direct competition to central office telling us not to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that we were forbidden from sharing our software, for one thing. So called it committing portability. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, and as long as we had that dynamic tension, it worked really well. We had the enemy in central office, and we were the bunch of scoundrels out in the field. Uh, when we were finally accepted and were funded and had the support of central office and all of the joys of working with the bureaucracy, uh, things just went downhill in a, in a hurry. And all of the energy and the user feedback and the, the 50,000 VA employees that were all talking on this electronic forum to improve the system, you know, the many eyeballs approach. We built this very rich community that over time atrophied uh, turns out that some of those 50,000 people, you know, had the audacity to criticize management on the 
on their forum messages. And, uh, <laughs> so that one message out of the, you know, the 400,000 that week uh, got up to the, the secretary or whatever, and you know, oh my gosh, these people are saying this about me, you know, that kind of stuff. So that, that just killed the whole uh, grassroots initiative and momentum and the many eyeballs and the, the, the Wikipedia community type behavior and then just reduced it down to the, the software code level. So now in today's VA, all they're talking about is code. You know, it's, it's just the software. It's like how we reprogram Wikipedia and the community uh, is, is kind of lost. So that goes back into David's uh, diamond uh, thing within at least the VA. Uh, we don't have this, this broad middle class of people uh, connecting that way. But, um, no, I, I, I was wondering, you know, your, your accelerating change thing and the singularity, I mean, uh, that's your, your, one of your hot buttons, I know, at least the public's attribution to you. So what do you see happening in healthcare? I mean, uh, we're, right. we're going through some roof, and what's right. going to happen? Um, so, uh, I d deliberately did not go that far. Okay. But that is, that is, uh, the, the, to, to, to me, the, uh, probably in, inevitable uh, outcome of the self-bootstrapping uh, uh, feature of yeah. the improvement in, in uh, IT hardware. And that is that we, we automate this, we automate that, we do the, we manage uh, big data successfully or much more successfully than we are now. We, yeah. we do all of that. We're, we're closing on, in on the different features that have put us at the top of the heap yeah. in, in, in the pre-technological evolution biological evolution of the world. So uh, it, it seems to me that if, if we can avoid uh, disasters like nuclear war, um, that uh, we one near-term outcome of this, that, that is before 2030, say, one near-term outcome is the rise of superhumanly intelligent automation, things that are more creative, you know, more, more everything that is competent uh, uh, intellectually uh, than humans. And the question is, I take your question to be, what happens after that? And uh, well, yeah, okay, just getting here is with, with, with respect to with respect to medical yeah. IT, say. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, there are, are various people who think they have the answer to that. Um, mine is an enshrinement of agnosticism. I have no idea what would happen after that. That's like asking some chim chimpanzee what the new human, what the, these new critters called humans. Are going to do once they take over and set up a much more call it uh, on the land that I'm living on. Uh, I think actually that doesn't bode well for us. We ah, <laughs> it, yeah, it could it could be a, a very very destructive thing for us. On the other hand, if we were talking about something a million years from now, we'd probably get warm fuzzy feelings yeah. about such a possibility. You know, us us creating something that was so wonderful and, and better than us. It's it's the possibility that it might happen before you retire. Yes, <laughs> yes, so, yeah. So, I, I was going to think twenty thirty could you not push it? Uh, <laughs> so I, I I think um, I think it probably would be a very good thing for humans if if, if, if it happened. Yeah. Um, but unlike some of the explicit optimists, uh, it's important to realize that uh, although those critters could probably solve all your problems, that might not be high on their agenda. So you know when, when we're, we're <laughs> when we're if, when we're no longer at the top of the intellectual pyramid, then probably question, questions like this are, are above our pay grade. I see. <laughs> <laughs>